I will be reviewing JT gravity today. So what is the motivation behind doing this? First, what is JT gravity? It's a gravitational theory in one plus one dimension, which is time and space. Now, why is it important? It's because it gives us insights about higher dimensional theories of gravity. while being mathematically tractable. So we can get a lot of insights about theories which are higher in higher dimensions, but we can still use JT gravity to solve a few things. So why is it very popular? Just because of this criteria, it has become very popular in understanding different aspects of theoretical physics like area CFT, uh, black hole thermodynamics, so today we will, I will try to define action for JT gravity, derive equations of motions, and give you how we can use this in a few examples. So I will give you uh, two applications that we use this, maybe more than two, but I will try to explicitly explain why two of them work very well okay so let's start with the action so einstein hilbert action in two dimensions is given by where this is the Ricci scalar, this is the determinant of the metric, okay, and this is the gravitational constant. So this is the expression for Einstein's Hilbert action in two dimensions. And this is topological. What this means is that from Gauss-Bennett's theorem, which says that if we integrate Ricci scalar for a two-dimensional manifold over a two-dimensional manifold, obviously we have these terms, it gives us a topological invariant. This topological invariant only depends on the topology that we have and does not include any dynamics due to the metric. So essentially, because of Gauss-Bennett's theorem, this does not depend on metric. Instead, it's, a, it's topological, okay? Now, if this is the case, we don't really have any use for it because there is no dynamics due to gravity. It does not depend on the metric. And in order to rectify this problem, what we do is we couple this action to a dilaton field. Okay, so when we, in order to introduce dynamics, And then we get so, yes. Why don't you add the backward step? The, exactly, that's precisely what I'm doing. Uh, this is a scalar. Yes. Now I'm in So I have one question. So what's the topological invariant in So topological invariant. I'll tell you. This, this chi is known as Euler characteristics, and this is defined as Euler 
where G is the number of genus in the topology and B is the boundary. So for example, if we have a sphere, we have no genus and no boundary, so chi com comes out to be two. So if this integral comes out to be this part, we can see it has no dependence on the metric. So if we, it's just two. Yeah, because this comes out to be zero, this is zero. This is genus and this is boundary. So this is the Gauss-Bennett theorem. And it only works in two dimensions. So if we integrate the Ricci scalar over a manifold, over a two dimensional manifold, this is what we get. And then we have some boundary terms. Okay, this is when we couple it to a dilaton. We have some uh, choice of the boundary that we take. So in usual cases, this comes out to be where k is the trace of the extrinsic curvature. Okay, you can, so I'm, I, it might seem that I'm assuming a working knowledge of GR, but if you have any questions, you can just ask me what this is, what that is. Okay. Okay. So our usual choice of this potential is this, and we will see why in a, in a few minutes, where this is the cosmological constant. Okay, so if we write everything explicitly, this comes out to be Okay, so now we will try to derive the equations of motion. So first we will vary the bulk action, which is just this part with the Dilaton field. That comes out to be and if we just take to zero, we get so if we have a negative cosmological constant, which is which we should get R to be negative as well which gives us the ADS space. Now we vary with respect to the metric. So in order to vary with respect to metric, we have to, we, we know that R depends on metric. So first we know that R, which is the Ricci scalar, is defined as this where r nu nu is the Ricci tensor. Okay, so if we vary r, we get Okay, we know 
Let me just show how to vary. Does everyone know how to vary GMU? Okay. We substitute this here, we get okay. It's a scalar field. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's just a scale of fields. It's, it's a cosmological model. Yeah, we. Deflation of the. You have to use this manual of questions. Oh. Okay. So R mu nu is given in terms of Christopher symbols. Now, if we vary R mu nu, and it also has higher order terms, but we can ignore this when we vary. This variation will just commute inside, so it will become. We substitute it here. Okay, so this is the variation of the Ricci scalar, but we still have to now vary this part. Okay. When we vary this part, we get, let me just write the variation for the Christopher symbol and then I'll just substitute everything. Okay, this is the variation of this. Similarly, we vary this, and then we get this from before. This is torsion free. Yes. Okay, and we all know this is the D'Alembert's operator here. So this is the variation of R. Now the second term that we have in our, we we'll just write the action so that we have it here. So the first, uh, we have varied this, now we will vary the determinant of the metric that comes out to be
This is just the bulk term. Okay, it's here. And similarly, we can vary the boundary and the final would be bulk plus the boundary. Okay, we just integrate this by parts and I'm going to write the final expression. These are, this is the equation of motion for JT gravity. Questions? Okay. So as you can see, we could easily do it if you want. You can easily come from here to here. It's just integration by parts. Yes. Yes. So for the boundary term, why do you choose that specific boundary term? What if you we can choose that? any boundary term? So what's it depends the on the model that you're using. So like, so what's the difference would the result be if I choose another? Boundary? Nothing, because when you Just vary, in most cases the boundary terms vanishes. Mm, yeah, it matters. won't matter a lot. However, sometimes. However, if you choose a different boundary condition for what you'll get in the final answer is a Schwarzian derivative, which I will show you. Okay. Here, mu, mu and nu have only one and one values because it is the time and space thing. Yes. Mu and yes. nu. Yes. Yes. So this is everything is like one one d mm -hmm. two d. In yeah, total, one plus one d. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So one of the applications where we use we use that two dimensional manifold that Gauss Bennett theorem as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And from there we were getting the term. So is from it there, something like from there we weren't getting any dynamics due to the metric. Uh, so if we had any small perturbations in the metric, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have changed anything for us. It it was just a trivial expression for a two D the Einstein Hilbert action. Oh, okay, 2D, okay, okay. Trivial two D gravitational theory. Okay. We want the, the metric to have, yes. And that's why we coupled it to the Dilaton. Okay. 